Welcome back to another story time with the Chatham Kent Black Historical Society and Black Mecca Museum. This week we are going to be reading You Never Heard of Willie Mays and this is written by Jonah Winter and illustrated by Terry Widener. You Never Heard of Willie Mays. You Never Heard of Willie Mays? The Willie Mays? Oh geez, where to begin? How about Birmingham, Alabama, 1941? A kid with his ear glued to the radio. We interrupt this program for an important announcement. Joe DiMaggio has just homered off Red Sox pitcher Dick Newsom, extending his hitting streak to a record-breaking 45 games. As the story goes, a little boy named Willie Mays had himself a hero. Willie told his pop, I want to be the next Joe DiMaggio. Word was, Willie did everything, like Jolt and Joe. The batting stance, the way he ran, the way he threw. There was only one problem. The major leagues didn't allow black guys to play back then. Craziest rule there ever was. So maybe someday, this kid could play on a Negro League team, but wearing Yankee pinstripes was out of the question. In the deep south where Willie lived, black folks had to drink from a different water fountains and sit at the back of the bus. <clears throat> Most blacks in Birmingham worked back-breaking jobs in the steel, meal, steel meal, mills. That was all they could get. But Willie's pop had made some decent money playing center field for a semi-pro team, and he knew how much he could make if he were really good, if he were a pro. That's why he was always coaching Willie how to hit and how to play center. By all accounts, though, Willie didn't need too many pointers. He was a natural. He was the kid all the other kids wanted on their team. The one who ran a little faster, hit a little further, played a little harder than anybody else. And he was the kid everybody liked, who entertained his sisters by throwing dishes up in the air and catching them, just like they were baseballs, and this was the World Series. He was the kid who played with his pop on the still me steel mill team who once outran him for a fly ball because at age 14 Willie was already the better player. He was the kid who in 1946 at only 15 years old got asked to play pro ball in the Negro Leagues with grown men and he did. Suddenly this teenage kid was making more money than his pop and when the year after that the major leagues ended their stupid rule barring black guys there was a ray of hope that one day Willie might play in the major leagues just like Do Joe DiMaggio. What a wild thing that must have been for young Willie, spending his summer vacations playing for teams like the Birmingham Black Barons, riding around the country in a rickety bus through the night because no white only hotels would put him up, getting teased by the older guys who knew in their hearts he was already better than them, that he was going places even though his voice was still squeaky and his arms were still skinny and he still had a lot to learn. Legend has it the first time Willie got hit by a pitch, he was lying on the ground, wind knocked out of him, practically crying. His coach walks up to him and says, son, can you see first base? Y y yes, sir, Willie squeaks. Then I want you to get up and walk there. And the first chance you get, I want you to steal second. Well, as it turned out, Willie did steal second and third and scored a run. And he kept on running and running and running all the way to the major leagues. It was 1951 and there weren't too many black guys in the major leagues yet. They had to be mind-bogglingly good to make the cut. The team that signed him was the New York Giants and for us Giants fans, that was a big deal. See, we were just a so-so team back then. We never got higher than third place. We needed a miracle. And that kid was supposed to be just that. The next Babe Ruth, the next Ty Cobb, and yep, even the next Joe DiMaggio. All rolled into one. Long story short, Mays did not disappoint. Before his first game as a giant in Philadelphia, Willie was talking, taking practice cuts like guys do during warm-ups, and suddenly everyone, even the Phillies, stopped what they were doing and watched. Jaws dropped while this young black guy walloped ball after ball over the fence, one to the left field grandstand, one off the scoreboard, one into the stratosphere. Well, they hadn't seen nothing yet. For instance, his first at-bat at the Polo Grounds, the Giant Stadium, up against Warren's fan, one of the greatest pitchers of all times, Mays took a curveball that just paints the outside corner for strike one. Mays might 
be just a little overmatched here. Next pitch, swing and a miss. The count, 0-2. Here comes the pitch. Maze connects. The ball is headed for the, no, it clears the left field roof. Willie Mays in his first at bat in New York has sent one out of the stadium. Silence falls over the stands. Then, like a tidal wave, comes the roar. A 20-year-old rookie, a kid, had awakened the sleeping giants. Jeez, what a way to say, I'm here. And what he goes on to do that season, not just for the Giants, but for all of baseball, can't be explained with a number of stats. It was how he went all out every single moment, flying around the bases, so fast that his hat would fly off, charging line drives, hit to shallow center field like he his life depended on it, using his large, his classic basket catch, his glove held out like he was asking for a cookie. Cool as he could be and making throws no other humans could make, including one so great, it got nicknamed the throw. Willie Mays is reaching up with one hand. He's got it. He spins 180 degrees. Cox breaks for home. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The ball comes into West Run on the fly. Cox slides and West Run cuts him up down at the plate. Cox is out. Billy Cox is out. Catch, throw, run, hit, slug. Mays could do it all and he could do it with a style, my friend. To us kids, Mays was just like a big kid himself. He was one of us and he loved him, and we loved him. And he loved us right back. Talking to the fans, he'd always say hey in that high pitched voice that earned him the nickname, the Say Hey Kid. But what we all loved best was how hard he played. Mays tried so hard, sometimes passed right out there on the field. They'd have to carry him off on a stretcher. And then after games, he'd go back to Harlem and play stickball on St. Nicholas Field place with the neighborhood kids. It was like he couldn't stop. The polo grounds, the streets, he didn't care where he was playing. <clears throat> then, like a lot of guys his age, Willie got drafted by the army at the start of 52 and had to spend two years in uniform that didn't say Giants. By 53, the Giants had slid back into fifth place and us fans, we'd stop going to the games. What was the point? Yep, we was all counting the days till Willie returned, and when he finally did, he no longer looked like a kid. He's up to his fighting weight of 185, all of it solid muscle, but can he still play? Can he still play? Ha! Game one of the 1954 World Series, Giants and Indians. That's right, with Mays back, the Giants had made it to the series with the whole country watching on TV. Scores tied 2-2 in the eighth. Vic Wirtz at bat for Cleveland. Two guys on, nobody out, with the count one and two. Wirtz slams the ball to deep center field, and bam, Willie's running like a madman without even looking. This was crazy. I mean, this is a shot no one catches, not even the say hey kid. It was hit too far, too hard, and Willie has his back to it, looking like he might run smack into the wall. Still, he keeps barreling at one point doing that thing he does when he knows he'll make the catch, tapping his glove with his right fist. <clears throat> There's a long drive way back in center field, way back, way back. It is, oh my, caught by Willie Mays. Willie Mays just brought the crowd to its feet with a catch, which must have been an optical illusion to a lot of people. Boy. Willie turns around and fires that ball to the infield, which keeps the runner from scoring and helps win the game. In this play, he defies the laws of nature, gravity, baseball, common sense, eyesight, and probably a few other laws too. Unbelievable. You could fill a whole book with all the jaw-dropping plays Willie made, all the homers he hit, all the bases he stole, but when made the catch in 54, so special was that millions of people all over America had seen it on TV. It was the first time a lot of white folks had ever witnessed a black player who really was like Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, and Joe DiMaggio all rolled into one. Heck, even Joe D had to admit Willie had the best arm there ever was. Just look at him. Even as he falls to his knees after making that play, his eyes still taking in the path of the ball. Even then, you could see he was mentally still in the game, wanting to win, never giving up, ready for more. Yes, sir. In that moment, when Willie, Mil Willie made the catch, he showed the world a whole new way of playing the game. 
changed how people saw his skin. In his own way, he changed the world. And that is the end of You Never Heard of Willie Mays.